again is no. And some of us can look back and say, oh my goodness, that's what I do. That's the nature of my heart and of my thinking. And Paul, James is reminding us here, God is teaching us here, you can't try to bail out of every difficulty. You will never grow that way. Same thing with some of the difficulties that come in our life. We need to be not just simply trying to bail out of every uncomfortable circumstance. The other way we bail out, and this one's probably even more prevalent, we bail out of this process of growth by simply facing everything with a secular outlook. Facing our trials with a secular outlook. And we do that by refusing to calculate our trials the way he's telling us here. We do that by refusing to let difficulty drive us deeper in prayer, by refusing to let difficulty drive us closer or deeper into God's Word. We do that by refusing to let difficulty drive us to a brother and sister in Christ. How many times do we want to put on a great face and, and we don't want to let anybody that we know and we love in the church to even know that we're going through a difficulty? That's, that's one way of bailing out. God so often teaches me and grows me and builds my endurance through interacting with brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Word, in prayer, all of those things. And we bail out when we neglect those things. Maybe in sickness, we bail out by putting all of our emphasis on doctors, medicine. And we don't take time to go to God with it. Maybe in relational problems, we put all of our focus and our thoughts into manipulating some other person or self-pity instead of letting it drive us that difficulty in relationship drive us to God to his word to prayer to a brother or a sister in Christ when we face trials that way we neglect any refining from our father and here's here's a, a great statement the worst kind of suffering is wasted suffering and that's precisely what we do when we don't let them draw us closer to God. How are you handling being stuck at home? That's a negative way to say that. But how are you handling the current crisis? How are you handling not having toilet paper on the toilet paper aisle? How are you handling this fear that creeps in on all of us? Are you letting... This trial have its intended work on you, refining you and drawing you closer to God. So, final thing, how do we not bail out? How do we not bail out? How do we not let this be wasted suffering or difficulty? He talks about that in verse 5 and following. If any of you lacks wisdom, in other words, if you lack the wisdom to calculate the joy in this situation, the joy of God refining you, if you lack that, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. How do we not bail out? Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. God, help me to calculate this. Help me to reason around to where I see the joy of this, and I don't just bail out without ever growing in my faith and in my steadfastness. James says if we ask God, that asking will be rewarded. What a promise. God will give that wisdom abundantly, he says, and God, here's, a great new, here's some great news, and God will give it without rebuke. Do you ever hesitate to go to somebody, maybe especially God, because you're afraid they'll fuss at you when you get there? You should have known better, maybe we think God would say. James says, no, don't, don't think that way. God will not rebuke you for coming to him. Instead, he lovingly supplies for our deficiency. But we have to ask. And he goes on to say, and we have to ask in faith. Looking to God for wisdom in the midst of our trials with calm confidence gets an abundant answer from our Father. By the other, other thought there, setting our eyes frantically on our troubles and blurting out half-hearted cry in God's direction will not get us anything of growth. And some of you say, wow, I'm in trouble because I'm really, I'm really frantic right now. 
and I am blurting out quick prayers to God, it doesn't mean that God's going to abandon you. I remember a time when Peter was very frantic and he'd gotten his eyes off what he needed to have them on, and he blurted out a quick prayer to Jesus. And Jesus, didn't you remember that? He was walking on the water with Jesus, and the storm comes up. Peter gets his eyes off, and he cries out, and Jesus doesn't say, Oh, sorry, bye-bye, Peter. Bye-bye. Have a nice trip down. He, he instantly grabs him, and he lifts him up, and he puts him in the boat, and he, but he says this to him. Where was your faith? Where was your faith? Peter didn't have the great opportunity then to grow and to be refined, but he, he did have the hand of Jesus lifting him up. If that's you, uh, don't fret about that. Cry out to Jesus in your franticness. What a merciful God. What a merciful Savior. But if we want to be refined in this, grow in your confidence and ask God for wisdom with that confidence in this time. Again, don't waste your troubles. Troubles are not opportunities for frantic panic. Troubles are not opportunities for us to assert our own strength. Troubles are opportunities to drive us closer to Him. Finally today, uh, just a thought, who can do this? Who can, who can calculate this way and ask in this way and get these things? James said it at the very beginning, my, my brothers... Uh, he's talking to believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Those are the ones who can do this. They can have that kind of wisdom and receive that kind of wisdom. Some of you are listening in and you say, I don't know that I can say that I'm a brother or a sister to other believers. I, I've never trusted in Jesus and his death on the cross as payment for my sins. Well, listen, you can do that today. Um, you are tuning into this on our website, and on that same website is contact information for this church. Uh, my contact information is there. Please call me. I would love to sit down over the phone or at six foot apart and be able to share with you and talk with you and listen to you, but please call. Um, salvation is not an exclusive gift for an exclusive club of people. It is a gift that God extends to the world. And I would urge you, please reach out. What a great time. We have more time on our hands right now than maybe we've had in a long time. Take some of that time and contact me. Contact a brother or sister that you know, someone who is a Christian, and ask them about it. But believers, we can do this. We have everything in us for life and for godliness, Jesus teaches us, God's Word teaches us. We can do this. But believer, this kind of wisdom is not simply going to roll off of you. It has to be refined out of you. Are you submitting to the refiner's fire during these days? Is your gaze, your hope, your time, your effort, is it focused on him today? If not, refocus. If, if I were blurry in this image today, I would reach over and try to refocus this camera to where I wasn't so blurry. Uh, maybe today you need to refocus my brother and my sister on the Lord Jesus and grow in this refining. I want to close with just four questions. And these are some things, uh, Cornerstone Baptist Church family, I, I want you to chime in to me about. We can't talk. One of my favorite things on Sunday morning is when I get through preaching and we're able to go back and forth. And you're able to teach me as well and share things that you're learning and we can't do that quite the same here, but I can ask you some questions and you can email me or you can call me at the office and share. And I'll pass those things back out as the Lord continues to teach us uh, through your thoughts. So here's four questions. Number one, how important is our growth in patience? How important is our growth in patience? Um, I know a lot of people who say, I, I don't pray for patience because God will put stuff on me. no. God's committed to draw patience. That's what this whole passage is about. How important is patience and why is it so important? And I'll give you a couple of verses to look at on your own time. Hebrews 3.14 and a second passage, Colossians 1.21. Hebrews 3.14, Colossians 1.21. Look those up. Maybe tonight in lieu of our service, uh, regular service tonight, Look those up and spend some time thinking about and praying about how important this patience is. Number two, 
Is there a time in your life that you avoided trials in an unhealthy way and likely shortchanged your growth as a result? I'm asking you to look back, not so you can beat yourself up for that. Guess what? Jesus' blood has paid for that. Praise the Lord. I'm asking you to go back and look at that just to learn. There's, a pro there's an opportunity in my failures in the past to learn, not to beat myself up. So I want you to think about that. A time in your life you avoided trials in an unhealthy way and likely shortchanged growth as a result. Number three, we learned that we shouldn't waste our trials, but we should draw near to our brothers and sisters in Christ instead. Remember we talked about drawing near to God in prayer, in his word, and drawing near to brothers and sisters. How in the world can we draw near to each other right now? I mean, our governor has said, stay away, get, get back. How do we draw close to each other right now? There are some really simple ways, but maybe you would think through that and, and help me to think of some deeper ways. How can we uh, stay, draw near to our brothers and sisters in this trial? And number four, how could God be growing your patience in faith through this pandemic? How is God at work growing your patience in faith in this COVID-19 uh, difficulty? And in light of that, how should you be praying right now? Just some thoughts for us, and I look forward to hearing uh, from you or some other thoughts that this passage has stirred in you. I want to close us in prayer. God bless you. Please keep in touch with me if you need anything. Please let me know how you are getting entry to sow the, sow the seeds of the gospel and to disciple others through, through this time. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Uh, what, a, what a different way. What a different way. But Lord, your word is still living. It is still powerful. Your spirit is with us. Lord Jesus, you are in us who are trusting in you. Will you please grow us through this? Help me to evaluate right now the right way. And I pray for that for our church family. Thank you for loving us. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for being a merciful Savior and a majestic King. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy your day.